Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Julia from Venus, uh, University. My question is also the same about plagiarism. Is there any plagiarism for tables and uh, figures? In principle, any material you take from someone else without attribution, without referencing, is plagiarism. Now, in terms of, uh, I would not. I would not publish tables, okay, because they have been published already and you can, you can refer to previous publications. In terms of figures, sometimes it's useful to use data from figures and replot them your own way and then, for instance, add more data or manipulate them in a different way so you make them a new figure. What I would do in that case is I, say, I would say that this, this figure has been adapted from whatever the reference was. To make, to make clear that you have used someone else's idea for a figure, but you have adapted it for your own needs. And that's fine as well. The whole point is that you should reference previous work and previous ideas. Uh, another question is, uh, once our paper has been rejected and we are going to submit in the different journals with uh, some revision, do we need to make uh, some changes in our titles or we can use the same title? You can use the same title. Actually, this was a, an issue we discussed in this uh, massive online open course recently on academic writing. Some students asked, well, uh, do I need to tell the new journal after my paper has been rejected, do I tell the new journal that this paper was rejected from the previous journal? Don't do that. It's a none of their business. Thank you. Um, my name is Christian from Villano Sandra University. I got two questions about um, to avoid rejection in terms of uh, conclusion and future research. Um, the first one is but what are the minimum um, components we need to put in the conclusion? And sometimes is this like a hypothesis or what other components to avoid that? Um, we overlap or we uh, restated what have been uh, discussed before. And the second one about the future research and uh, the same. So the question is what are the minimum components to be included in the future research? Because sometimes from one journal to another journal, they have like uh, um, different um, demanding level of uh, what are to be included in those uh, two um, session conclusion and future research. I'm not entirely sure whether I got your question, but I think what you're asking is what, how do I write the conclusions in future work section such that uh, it's clear that your contribution is new? Uh, actually, there's, um, there's two different uh, separate questions. Like, um, um, probably let, let me rephrase the questions. Like, um, in, the, in the first uh, conclusion, um, some journals just require that uh, what is um, the essence that we need to convey, but another uh, journal um, required that we have to elaborate more on the hypothesis or uh, the other component that uh, has the novelty of our uh, journal. And the second one is about future research. Um, some journal required that um, based on our uh, reflection of uh, what the journal will be written and then what is the future um, research that we need to um, uh, do more. But some journal required that what um, what is the base of our uh, paper from others uh, authors uh, that have been uh, developed so that we um, have a clear uh, novelty of frontier? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think I understand that. <laughs> um, you, I think what you should do, but that would be good. So so any paper should be should be logical in its composition from the original research question or hypothesis all the way through to the conclusions. And in order to have the best chance of getting a paper accepted, um, it should be novel and it should make a real contribution to research in the field. And so it is good to uh, point out what your novel contributions are, no matter what the journal wants. Just point out what your novel contributions are in the right context, right? So you, you can say, well, our, the novelty is, is this and this, and this builds on previous work by the other authors, but the other authors didn't go as far as we did. So just spell it out. Just say, okay, this is the novelty of our work, 
And uh, yeah, there is this previous work, but we've gone further, and now we can go even further if we have more data. That's your future work section, right? So spell it out. That's the most important advice I can give. Sometimes in the binary journal, they require, uh, in addition to that, uh, like to elaborate more into the hypothesis that we already discussed. In this. Is, is this um, make sense? Can you repeat that? Uh, yeah. In addition to what you mentioned uh, just now, um, some journals require that uh, we have to more elaborate uh, kind of like uh, the uh, hypothesis that we have uh, discussed before. So, uh, because you mentioned like a novelty, as a etc., but um, well, I mentioned the novelty and context. You have to provide the context. And so what you refer to there sounds like the context. Yeah. Right. So the basis. You have to spell out the basis, right? That, yeah. that way you have it. So the, the whole idea is to, when you write a paper, you want the reader to need... Uh, you, you don't want the reader to have to refer to other papers to understand what you've been doing. You want a self-consistent picture. Right? So, yeah, to provide the proper context, uh, say what other people have done, and say how you built on that to reach your own results. So just make sure that it's a full package. Ah. And how about the second one about the future research? Whether we is it sufficient to um, just report to our paper and then what, what we will do next, or yeah, is it yeah, equal sure. to um, sure? Uh, because well, like the, the point is, your any any research will provide you with results, but it will provide you with more questions as well. Yeah. So. Uh, it's, it's always good to address those questions that arose from your research and say, well, these are the questions that arose. We could potentially address them in this, this, this way, but that's beyond the scope of the present paper. Right? But that, that way you already say, look, we can do something in the future, but we need more time or we need more paper or whatever. And how about the second scenario where, well, um, when we uh, refer to previous authors' future research and we kind of taking care, taking care of that author future research? Um, because sometimes uh, it's kind of like a, a personal opinion. Um, mm. The novelty level is uh, not any good in that sense. Well, okay. I think this, this relates to plagiarism, actually. Ah. So, so previous authors may have suggested to do a certain aspect of future research. And you can say, well, look, these authors suggested that research. We have actually provided the answer here. Right? I'm not saying it. That's fine. perfectly fine. But if you say, well, um, you know, we propose to do the following as future research, and someone else already said that. That is a bit of uh, a gray area. Uh, but is this a happening that um, those authors refer to this future, uh, his or her future research, and he's not able to, let's say, or not able, or he's, he doesn't have time to? Is it um, ethical to? Uh, um, I've seen it. Uh, I, in my field, I've seen it happen. But yeah, uh -huh. some people suggest future future research. And then another team does it. And yeah, it happens. Once it's out in the published literature, you can do anything you like with it, right? I mean, you're not stealing ideas because it's, it's been published. So you can, you can actually take that idea on board and do it yourself. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nurudin from Pertamina University. Uh, I have a basic question. Uh, what is the difference between conference paper and journal paper? For engineering oh, case, what, what, what was the first paper? What is the difference between conference paper oh, yeah. and a journal paper? In case for engineering, uh, I a conference is peer review conference. And I have uh, experience when I submit a conference uh, to IEEE conference. The reviewer uh, gave a comment saying that this paper is recommended to be submitted in the journal paper. So what I have to in, improve in the uh, paper to be uh, to make a difference between conference paper and the journal paper. Thank you. What is your field? Uh, mechatronics, electrical engineering. Right. So I believe in your field, conference papers are more important than journal papers, right? Uh, I think uh, journal paper is higher. But, oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, because in some fields, in engineering and computer science. Uh, what what uh, university administrators care about are the conference papers. These are peer reviews. In most other fields, conference papers, confer conference contributions tend to um, provide perhaps preliminary initial results, 
and the conference paper will write up the preliminary results, and the, the journal paper will then cover more, more of the backgrounds, more extensive analysis, and we'll have a better, more in-depth discussion. So conference papers tend to be the seeds of proper journal papers, particularly in fields where journal papers count more. And so I think that's, that's what you asked, right? Thank you. I would like to know what is the appropriate number of time, how long does it take for a reviewer to review a submitted manuscript? Thank you. Uh, seems, that's a good question. It seems that this is a matter, it depends a bit on the, on the subject area. In the physical sciences, we're talking about anywhere between one and two months. In the uh, humanities, it can be a lot longer than that, particularly if you have books, because books tend to, more, tend to need more time for review. Uh, but even so, also journal papers in the humanities can take up to half a year or longer for the reviewer to go through. Uh, but for any regular research article in, in a quantitative science, uh, one to two months is, is an appropriate time to keep in mind. Thank you. 